This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Hyler versus Butler. You two are married? Yes, Your Honor. Been together two... Married two years, together five? Yes. Yes. And you all actually met when you were putting your mother in a nursing home. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. All right. So, why did you bring your husband here today? Because I feel like my husband's side chick instead of... And not his wife. His side chick? Yes, his side chick. How does a wife become a side chick? How does a wife become a side chick? What is he doing to make you feel like a side chick? I can call my husband sometimes. He won't answer my calls. Oh. He'll send me straight to voicemail, depending on who he around. So, automatically, I'm going to feel that type of way. This hurts you deeply. Yes. I'm your wife. This not, I'm not your girlfriend. Do you treat her like a side chick? I treat her... I, tr- I treat her accordingly. So, what does that... Whoa. Okay. <laughs> what so that is there a time... Wait, wait, wait. So, Hold what up. What does that mean? Is there a time when she's a side piece? She acts like a side piece? I don't know a wife that puts you out three times a week. What are you doing? Years. And I don't... Well, like, I don't, you, know I, I don't put him out that. three times a week, but when I do, don't answer or, like, lock the door, it's because he been ignoring me all day long. Whoever you around, I don't care who you around, answer your phone. Anything could be happening. I gotta tell you, we have three kids. <laughs> and... And not answering the phone is not an option. I don't it's care how mad option. we are at each Can't other. Do that. You got to answer your phone because you but, don't know what's going on see, in the it, household. Yeah, y'all cut from a different type of cloth. This is a different type of situation. No, it's not. Yeah. So, no, no man, man folks, it's married folks. Marriage is marriage. Yeah, uh, wait, the, wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you this. Did your vows say in sickness and in health? No. You didn't... Oh! Your vows didn't say that? My, oh, my did... vows say treat them like suppose. What? So treat people how they treat you. Better or worse? You didn't have better or worse in your vows? I ain't hear nobody tell me that. Who, who said that? And this was his idea to get married and, and, and this is how I'm getting treated. Even the clerks, when we got married at the courthouse, in my courthouse, they said, maybe you shouldn't marry this man. He's not ready. And they don't even know us. Okay, they said that at the courthouse? When you yes. get married? Yes. Don't All right. marry him because he was cracking jokes and stuff about getting married. He was not taking it seriously. And this well, was his idea. He proposed me. I didn't say let's get married. He did this. Okay. What's on the line today if you find out he's cheating? I'm done. I'm going to file for divorce. I'm just really leave because he... I can't make nobody be with me. Right. I cannot make him love me. I can tell you are absolutely serious about I'm this. I'm tired. Do you understand that she is absolutely serious that if this doesn't... If you are cheating, she is divorcing you? Yes. Are you okay with that? I mean, I don't want to get no divorce, but if that's what, you know, what we got to do, that's what we got to do. Do you love her? Yes. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to stay with her? Uh, No. Ah! Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. I can't, I can't. I got up so, out of my bed and came here, so yeah, I'm gonna do what it takes. So, so are these the kind of jokes you were cracking on your wedding day that put the question in her mind from day one? Hey, wait a minute, those are the jokes he was cracking. He missed the important part. In, in sickness and hell, better or worse, you missed the part they that re- you need that. to hear. They don't have that no more. Yes, they do. <laughs> did you, wait, at the wedding you show went to, me. did they have that? Yes, they did. They All right, show, y'all they... were at different weddings then. Uh, Clearly, okay. at some point, you were happy. Yeah. yeah. It's hard for me to see it. You can see I got one eye open on this. Right. Can you take me back to the happy times? Okay. When I first met him, he, uh, I met him at his place of employment. Okay. He was, uh, he a CNA, and my mother had, was getting transferred into his facility. Okay. And, um... Uh, his co-worker called him up. You should come up here. These girls from Chicago, they pretty, you know. What was he like yeah. back then? Um, he was telling me, like, all this good stuff, like, um... Like what? You beautiful... Because I may want to tell Miss Cutler some of this. So, t- <laughs> what, what good stuff was uh, he telling Oh, he was telling me, like, you're a beautiful uh, woman and... Yeah, I like that. You need uh, that. I like the fact, okay, you wear your real hair and stuff like that. <laughs> You know, he just made me, like, feel like... He put my self-esteem, like, over the roof. When he said that at the time, he meant it. He didn't just say that. He couldn't have been just saying that at the time. 
Uh, all right. Do stuff like that. Mr. Right. Butler, is that how scary. you remember it? She cute. She always been pretty to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she ain't that, No disagreement there. Yeah, she a pretty woman. And so how did you treat her in the beginning? Uh, decent. All right, well, here's my question. <laughs> You say he treats you like a side piece. What was he doing at that time that's different than what he's doing now he in terms of how he whole... treats you? Can I go into history or... Absolutely. We want to hear the story. Okay, I met him at the nursing home. Six weeks later, I found out he was married. Oh! Ooh! He didn't tell okay, you he was married? <laughs> no. I found out one of the co-workers at the job they conveniently wanted to let him know that uh, his wife had called. And you had no idea? No. What point did it seem like, okay, I probably ought to mention to this young lady, I'm still married? I, I mean, That's she, not fair. After she, fa after she found out, you know, I, I, t no, I told I, her. Yeah, if she I, hadn't I, found I out. I was trying to get her first, and then I was gonna tell her. No, no, okay. no. That's not how this works. Because, that's, see, that's... doing it that way, you put in her mind distrust right off the beginning. So you messed up your relationship with that, that notion. Because you know what? If you're married, you ain't supposed to have a, a friend. Yeah. Okay. okay, so ultimately, I mean, we can talk about this all day. Ultimately, you all, he divorces and you all get married. Yeah. And yeah. how was that at the beginning? You're married at the beginning. Good. It was good? At first. So why are you convinced that he's cheating now? Go ahead. I didn't call him on um, dating websites since we've been married. What? And he say that he do this when he get mad at me. I didn't talk to a couple of the women. He betrayed himself to be a single man. How did you find out he was I went on his phone when he was asleep and they got notifications. Oh. Mr. Butler? Yes. Are you on dating sites? I was. Since you've been married? Yeah, I've done it. Did you list yourself as a married man or a single man? I, I list myself as a single man. Do it, you think you're single? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> when I get put out. Why are you getting put out? Three times a Why week. Why are you getting put out? I do, Why? I go do what I want to do. Because if, if you put me out your house three times a week, what you going to do? Why is your wife putting you out of the house three Your Honor, times a week? Because he get caught cheating well, and on can... dating websites, well, and he don't answer the phone. Well, I, I talked to these ladies. He he met one that lived right down the street from us. He took money from her. This woman told me when I called her that she was his business. She didn't even know he was married. She said I'm his business partner selling cars. I said, excuse me. He's a man. Who are you? Did you know he had a business partner? No, I'm the only business partner. <laughs> and she, she, she was misinformed by him. She was a lady that I met. Uh huh. We know that much. Yeah. And then, and then what happened? Well, I, I met, I met, I met this lady off, off, uh, off the dating website. Uh huh. The dating website. And then when, when, when I met her. Your Honor, she brought him, she brought him jeans, about, about brand new year. jeans. So, I seen her in a... She bought you clothes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, what did you do to get her to buy you clothes? Why? She just liked it, me. She, no. uh-huh. Yeah. I liked it here, but I didn't buy him clothes till he was mine. But my, my, my... <laughs> that's, un that's understandable. Did you ever sleep with this woman? No, I didn't want to. She, if she looked like something, I would have. <laughs> We, we're done with that. <laughs> Tell me about this other okay, lady. Okay, this other woman he so-called met at this car wash. She used to be weighing like 500 pounds, that's what he told me. And then she lost weight or whatever. He met her at the car wash and um, she offered to, she had a car she wanted to give to him. He sell cars, I guess she didn't know about me. She said, well, I got this car, you can just have it, you can sell it. The seat broke, because I used to weigh 500 pounds. I broke the seat back in the car. He told me this. So we got Blue Jean Lady, 
the and we got a car wash lady. The fa- yeah, the car wash 500 pound lady. Well, what makes you think that he was cheating with her? Because I, I didn't know nothing about it. I didn't meet but, him. I didn't meet her with him. I know, but what makes you think he was cheating he was with her? Because it happened behind my back. I'm not for sure. I want to find okay. out. I don't all know. All right. Uh, I want to know what you're so, laughing so about. So all you know is that he was talking to her. Telling, yeah. That's he telling the story. Mr. Butler, did you sleep with a woman from the car wash? No. I haven't had sex with anyone but my wife. Did you have any kind of relationship with this woman from the car wash? No, I haven't. Did you text her? Quite a few times. Wow. Yeah. Miss Hyler, are there any other women yes. that you know yes. about or any other... Just recently, he went to Nap in the beginning of May. He met a woman at a liquor store. She was on his Facebook page. And the only reason why he removed her off his Facebook page is because she started asking questions about me, his wife, somebody that he just met. Well, I mean... Do you care? Do you have a response? About what? Ms. Oh, okay. Ms. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Miss Hyler, if we find out that Mr. Butler has, in fact, not had sexual intercourse with these women, are you willing to stay? We gotta get counseling. Some marriage counseling. Oh, That's my it. God. I do some marriage counseling. So, what you're saying is there's a lot on the line here. Yes. And you want answers. Yes. To get to the bottom of this, we've had Mr. Butler take a polygraph examination. Yes. And most importantly, we have the results. Ron, would you escort licensed private investigator Eric Eccles into the courtroom, please? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, How you sir. Doing, Your Honor? How are you, Mr. Eccles? I'm doing fine, Your Honor. How about yourself? We're doing good. 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 You have worked on a lot of cases similar to today's couples, haven't you? Oh, yes, I have. What techniques do you use to investigate these types of cases? Well, as you can tell, when you're dealing with a character (laughs) such as... Oh, my God, exactly. (laughs) Character. There, there are different techniques. Um, there's surveillance. Okay. Uh, you can do covert surveillance and mobile surveillance. So tell us what you did to investigate Mr. Butler. Well, Mr. Butler, you can see he's smiling at me. Um, I went undercover um, in this particular case, and we did polygraph. And when I say undercover, I posed as if I was oh, the cheating spouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even know that was you. <laughs> so I did that, and then we did polygraph. Ah. Uh, all right. So when you went undercover, uh, what did you find? One of the things that, that I look at when I do something like that, I, I look at the responses that a person gives me. Okay. And the responses that he gave me, some of them turned out to be that he was not being 100% honest. Mm-hmm. You also had him take a polygraph test, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. One of the questions Mr. Butler was asked was, since being married to Lisa, that's Ms. Hyler, did you have sexual intercourse with the lady you met at the car wash? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, his response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that Mr. Butler was being truthful. All right. How are you feeling? How do you feel? That's good, you know. That's but you, you, want, you want more? Yes. Mr. Butler was asked, since being married to Ms. Hyler, have you had a sexual intercourse with the woman who bought you clothes? No. What was his response to that question? Mr. Butler's response, Your Honors, was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that Mr. Butler was being deceptive. Mr. Butler? Oh, my God. I ain't had sex with the woman. Did you have anything with the woman? Nothing. Did you kiss her? Did I kiss her? Did I stutter? No, she kissed me. Oh, she kissed you? She kissed you. All right, Did you kiss her back? Uh Uh-uh. It wasn't that type of kiss. It's like a kiss on a job. Uh, uh, uh. How many thank, times? So she didn't buy them jeans for anything. Okay. I ain't, That's t- I ain't touched Ms. them. Miss Hyler, the, the polygraph indicated the deception was indicated. Okay. Now, what do you want to do? How long ago was that? A year ago? 
I, I got, I already got my paperwork to file for divorce. <laughs> Why are you clapping? Your wife just said she got paperwork to file for divorce, and you're clapping. I, I, I just don't know, man. I, I, we'll work it out. Well, you know, Miss Hyler. I'm never gonna be able to trust. I'm never gonna. I can't do it no more. I'm 45 years old. I just want to like move on with my life. I can. I don't need that. You all have known each other for 30 years or more. You've been married for 15 years. You have three children together. But allegations of cheating are just ripping your relationship apart. Ms. Smith, why are you here today? Well, first of all, Judge, Your Honor, I'm here because my husband, I believe, has some infidelity issues. Um, he does not answer his phone when I call him. She don't answer he, her phone when I, ask, when I call her. Talking about Mr. Smith, hold on. You're talking chance. about you. Uh, we're talking about both he of us. He does not answer his phone when I call him. Mm -hmm. And then when I call him, he say he's somewhere when he really ain't. And mm -hmm. today, I want some results. And if you yeah, find out baby. he's cheating... I'm gonna kick that butt yeah, to the curb. Baby. To the curb. <laughs> Yeah, to the curb. Baby. She is done. Gone. To the curb. After 15 years of marriage, you're gonna be done. <laughs> like a steak. Never. No, Never. Well done. Never. All right. Well done. Never. Put a fork in it. So huh. We know baby. We, don't care well steak, done. So we, we know a good steak. So when okay. you say well done, well, we baby, know Well, baby, I'm already charged, so you, you can imagine With that. With a little crisscross Hello. on top of it. Baby. Go. All right. All right, All right, Mr. Smith, you've been wanting to talk. Okay. Now, why are you here? I don't answer my phone. She don't, she don't answer hers, neither. But, but why are you here? Don't, we're not talking about her okay, answering well, the phone. I, I want to know why you're here. I'm here to state, the, 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 to let her know that I'm not cheating. I'm, you know what I mean? When I, when I don't answer my phone, I'm not cheating. Well, you need to answer when so, I call. So is this all in her head? I mean, what's going on? It's all in her mind. I mean, you know, that's, that's what made me get out, in, get out in the streets. Whatever she don't do at home, I can go get out in the street. She don't want to oh, back so that, but she don't want to back that, but she don't want to look. When I be trying to touch her and this and that, she don't want to do it. She don't want to tell me to touch it. Whatever I don't get in, whatever I don't get at home, I can get in the street. And I tell her back that so thing up. Back what it up. What you doing? And back so when you so when you're in the street, back it up. That's what she supposed back. to do. So when you're in the street, you get what you're not getting at home. Nah, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got it yet, but when she do, you know what I mean? I start standing. I start standing. Look, hold on. She start backing it up. Yeah, correct yourself. She start backing it up. Okay, so let me get this straight. Okay, all right, hold on. I ain't got to get a chance to get it. Hold on, hold on. Let's. Mr. Smith is saying, and you you tell me if I heard this right. I think you heard it. So he says, back that thing up. Uh-huh. And either she does, and he's happy about it. Or? Or he go in the street. I go in the street and go get it. Oh. All right. So is that All what right. you're saying you've done? That, ain't that what I told you? Have you done it? I ain't done it yet, but I will. Well, okay, let so me you, know so, something. All right, so, Mr. Smith, you talked about her backing that thing up. <laughs> Let's back it up to when you all met. How did you meet? At the motorcycle club with his, I was me and his brother were friends. He told his brother, "Oh, I want to, I want to meet her. And I like those lips." That's it. Hold on, Mr. Smith. This, we, this the lips. This I lips. was not attracted to him remotely either. And because I wasn't I attracted went to you, brother honey. With a Jerry curl. Hello, somebody. You had a okay, Jerry wait curl. A minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I had a Jerry curl. A all right, big, greasy it, it, one. It, it fried all off now, so you know, hey. It won't okay. grow. Oh, so now. I have a picture that was submitted in the court file. And Mr. Smith. Yes, oh, there you go. This is Look at you. Look at that handsome man. Look at you. Oh, though, then, though. That's oh, back in the day. Back, back in, in the day. day. Yeah, you got your whole very white thing. On everything. <laughs> you got your player player hat on. I that need to tell you. Player style, baby. She, and you were not. not I, and Miss Smith, you were not attracted to this initially. Yes, she was. Not remotely. Yes, she was. But Mrs. Smith, uh, you contend that she liked it. Right. Every woman that I had, I used to be a player. I'm hey, Everyone out there, she ran them all the way. I sure did. Ran them all the way. You shut down all the player moves. I did. They sitting in his car. He had a convertible at this time. Yes. Oh, no. I somebody. I would go, who, who, what's going on? Who is this? Going about your way. Yes, I would snatch her out the car physically. And she's gone. Yeah. Hello. Wow. Wow, wow. Now, that's... Well... That's taking your claim. That is... She was all about it. <laughs> Now, I have mm -hmm. never had to snatch nobody out your yeah, car. Yeah, body, body, baby. But yeah. I, I, don't uh, even, I don't even know if I would... I would be afraid to I do start, that. I started back getting, getting it back. Guy came over there. He, it was a 1,000 degrees outside. He had on a leather suit. Okay, let me... Come let over me... there and come pick her up for dinner. Oh, no, it's not happening. <laughs> See ya. 
So y'all been snatching folk out of each other's way for a while. Oh, a long wow, wow. time. And see, that means you all, you all were trying to be together. You didn't want to be with anybody well, else. Because you wanted you wanted him for you and you wanted her for you. Not really. Yes, yes you did. did. Yes, you really. did. So after all your plan around, after all this, he's doing what he's doing, you doing what you're doing, you got married. Right. And you've been married ever since. Yeah. Right. All right. You were happy at some point during your marriage. When you got married, please say yes. <laughs> please say when you got married, you were happy. If you ain't happy when you get married, you ain't gonna be happy. I was happy there, yeah. Okay. So why are we here today? What is it that makes you think that Mr. Smith is cheating right now? Because he does not answer his phone. You don't answer yours. We ain't talking about me. Mr. Smith, we'll get to you. Hold on. And I downloaded GPS on his phone. Wait, hold on. You say he doesn't answer his phone. What do you mean? I mean, some people miss calls. People miss calls all the time. I don't care. You ain't supposed to miss a call when I call. And if you see I call, then answer your... Call me back or something. Don't just act like it don't exist. So, so you... how many times are you calling him? I can call him somebody? 20 times in a row, and this knucklehead will not answer his phone. <laughs> okay, when so when you, when you... Hold on. So when you call him, he doesn't respond. At some point, you get in touch with him or he comes home. What do you tell him? Mister, where you been? And what does he say? At the casino. You ain't got <laughs> that dang much money to be at the casino no all night. Maybe he's winning. Night. So when why are you not answering you, your you, phone? But, like, in the casinos, when you're in the casinos, you're, you can't... I mean, you're, you can... Uh, well, the phone will ring, but you, you can't, you can't hear it out. or whatever. Then once you come out of the casino, you'll see that you missed a call. Well, I... Miss Smith, that sounds reasonable. No. <laughs> You don't believe he's at the casino because he's not answering the call. Is that correct? You see that? He lying like the rug. <laughs> All right. What else do you have? Because I, I mean, I can... I'm not saying it's true, but I understand... The, the GPS issue. tracker, Judge, Your Honor. Okay, so you... If you bring it up, I, I can show you. Step to the monitor, please. Thank you, sir. Hello. Looking. I saw you. He watching. Yeah, he's still looking he's... at it. I still got it after all these years. You still got something going on there. Got... Let's see what you got. This is the GPS tracker. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's downloaded on my phone, his phone. Okay, and they're right. linked up. <laughs> Hello, this home. All right. Where he never seems to make it to. Uh-oh. This is the casino, about uh -huh. 20 minutes away. Okay. I call his phone. Uh-huh. Where you at, babe? And he's all the way over there. I'm at the casino. Okay, I go to the tracker. It say something different. He 20 minutes away from I the casino. I don't tell him I'm at the casino when I'm not. So yeah, he's right. all the way over there instead of at the casino. Yes, ma'am. And you believe he's with another woman? Of course. But anyway, I'm, well, why you got me, to lie to kids? You ain't got to lie. I can go and, and be going. Thank you. Why is the don't phone? No woman tell me, don't no woman tell me where to go, when to come. Nothing Mr. Smith. Right. Okay, going. hold it, Mr. Smith. If I tell her I'm at the casino, I'm at the casino. If I tell her I'm over a friend house, I'm over a friend house. What friend? But why is the GPS it, it, telling it, it, okay, her something she, different than what she, you're telling okay, her? Okay, she says she come wherever I'm at. Knock on the door. Mr. Smith. Knock on the door. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Why is the GPS telling her something different than what you're telling her? That, that's because she don't come check. Now, he said you didn't come check on him. Have you ever found him where, somewhere where he wasn't supposed to I be? I have found his car... And he not be there. Did you, did you not get out? Did okay, tell us what happened. Mr. Smith, hold on. Tell and us what happened. This is what happened. I'll call him to see where he at. Okay. Oh, I'm with my friends. Da, 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 da. Okay. I get in my car and I go look for him. I find the car. I call him. He ain't there. He in the car with his friend. Somewhere right. other than where he was supposed to be? Bingo. And oh. so when you asked him about that, what did he say? We went somewhere. We went, we went rolling over here. We went rolling over there. We... I don't drive my car everywhere. You know what I mean? I just... I, I drive to the other side of town and I park my car and I might get in the car with a friend or, you know... I don't, you... I, don't, I don't just roll everywhere in my car. And you don't believe he's rolling with a friend. You think he's rolling again, with baby. another woman. It's, it's real. It's real. That rug is real. When I call his phone and after it rings several times, then finally he initiate to answer the phone and then he he answered like I'm one of the homeboys. What's up? Never. Wait, hold on. What is that? No, no, no. Hold on. Tell me what that looks like. He answers like. like one of the homeboys. Yeah, like, what's up? 
I mean, he says that to me. I don't take no, that as... No, not, not like you his homeboy, though. I'm not your homeboy. I'm your wife. Yes, darling. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Not what's All up, right. baby, but it's like, what's up? No, what okay. You... Okay, that... so I don't understand. You call me a, a lot of times. I don't answer the phone. So then you finally call me and I pick up. No, I don't call you and you don't answer the phone. <laughs> Come on now. Huh. Work with me here. Preach. Okay. Work All with right. me here. Preach. Okay, so phone rings and I finally answer it. I say, yo, what's up, man? Why are you saying what's up, man, to me? <laughs> oh, dude, don't play me like that, man. Why are you saying dude to me? Uh-huh. Are talking... you saying that's what he's doing? Right. Well, oh. What do you mean? Hello, babe? Okay, so... No, this... You don't oh, say yeah. no hello, babe. I when do I, sometimes. When I, when I... So the reason you're concerned about this is why would he do that? Who's listening exactly. with him? Exactly, bingo. And you think it's another woman. Hello, somebody. Okay. Mrs. Smith, is it your testimony based on everything we're hearing that you have not cheated? That's my testimony. And so her being concerned about the phone call and you like, what, or what's up, or, or what's up, man, or whatever it is, is not proof that you with another woman. It's not. Let's review what we have in like terms of evidence. Cold. We have the GPS tracker that's been put on Mr. Smith's phone. And he's not where he says he's supposed to be. Exactly. He's not 20 true. minutes away from where he's supposed to be. You say he disappears, and you're calling and calling and calling. He says he's at the casino, and he doesn't respond. I thought he was Wesley Snipes in Disappearing Act. Oh, my goodness. And then you have to call him, like, you say 100 times. Well... Before I mean, he answers his phone. And then he answers you as if you're one of his homeboys. And so you think that there's another woman sitting over there listening so he doesn't want her to know he's talking to his wife. Yes. This is all the evidence we've had. And you're saying if it comes out that Mr. Smith, who is denied that he's cheating, is in fact cheating, your 15-year marriage, your family is done. Yes. You are out the door. Tell her the win. Tell her the promise. This court has done a full and complete investigation to determine is he cheating? <laughs> At this time, the court would like to hear from licensed private investigator Eric Eccles. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Eccles into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. <laughs> Eric Eccles. Step right over to the monitor, please, sir. Thank you. Tell us what you and your team did to investigate this case. In this particular case, we put Mr. Smith in a room with one of my female associates, and her goal was to find out whether or not Mr. Smith is a cheater. What were your findings? Well, let's take a look. <laughs> As you can see, looking at the video, my associate walks up to Mr. Smith after a few minutes of them communicating at which time they then exchange social media accounts. Hmm. And what's that no, about? No, you show me some pictures. Then she asked me... Hold on, Mr. Oh, Smith. Mr. Smith? Wait, oh, hold okay. on. We're hearing from Mr. Eccles hey, now. Hey. Continue, Mr. Eccles. So once they exchange um, social media accounts, uh, you can see on the video, this is where they were um, communicating. I mean, it looks like there's some... Um some interaction going on. Looks like it could be innocent. Well, Your Honor, um, after um, looking at it, there was some flirting. There was, there was never no flirting. Well, your team also conducted a polygraph exam. Is that correct, Mr. Yes, Apple? Your Honor, we did. And you have those results? Yes, I do. All right. Mr. Smith was asked, have you ever told your wife that you were at the casino when you were actually having physical sexual contact with another woman? What was his response? Mr. Smith's response, he pled the fifth and refused to answer. What? He didn't, he didn't, ask, he didn't ask me. He didn't, he didn't ask me. Mr. Smith. No, no, cut it out. no, Mr. no, no. Smith. I didn't know. You what? all came here and your wife specifically came here okay. for answers. You said you came here to show that you were doing the right thing. Exactly. Why are you pleading the fifth? Answer the question. I didn't. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't answer that question. OK. Let's ask the next question. Mr. Smith was asked, have you ever had sexual intercourse with another woman in the 15 years that you have been married to Mrs. Smith? What was his response? 
Mr. Smith was asked, have you ever had sexual intercourse with another woman in the 15 years that you have been married to Mrs. Smith? What was his response? Again, Your Honor, he pled the fifth and refused well, to answer. Well, you don't have an answer? Sure he did. OK. So you pled the fifth to that question? I did. Why did you refuse to answer if you both if came here for ago, I don't know what I done did or what I didn't do. Yeah, you know. OK, wait. Well, that's a yes or no question. OK, no. But that's not truthful. Well, OK. Why you can't answer it? Have you had my, sex my... in the past 15 years, Denise? No. In the 15 years you've been married, you said you don't know what you did or didn't do? Exactly. What? You... No, no, no. Well, I played the fifth. Oh, well, no, Mr. Smith. whatever. <laughs> No, when you're married, you know whether you cheated or not. So, Miss Smith, my question to you is, are you going to stay? Are you out? I'm out. Okay. Like Audi 5000. <laughs> I mean, because point blank, the question is plain and simple as the nose on our faces. Miss Smith, this is a 15-year marriage. And your point? No disrespect, but I'm doing him a favor. You all have known each other for 11 years. You're living together. And, Ms. Parker, you found yourself a younger man to enjoy your life with. But whether that enjoyment continues all depends on the outcome of today's proceeding. Am I right? Yes, sir. All right. Tell us why you've initiated this case. Well, um, like I said, we've been known each other for a long time. And um, we recently, about two years ago, became a couple. And he is 10 years younger than I am. And... I needed a man to step up to the plate and be there for me, and uh, it's not been so great. <laughs> no. So, um, what do you think he's doing? Uh, cheating. You think he's cheating? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, come on, I'm older. When... Okay, but the prey doesn't run from the cougar. The prey gets caught <laughs> by the cougar. All right. You keep it locked down. <laughs> I yeah. try to keep them real, then. You know, I've tried. <laughs> so you think he's cheating. What are the warning signs that you've seen? Um, when he comes home from work, um, <laughs> instead of, you know, chilling out and laying in bed, watching TV, going to bed, going to sleep, instead it's come home, take a shower. Oh, baby, where are you going? Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to go outside, smoke a cigarette. Whatever. Okay. I lay down in the bed, you know, because I got to work, too. Wake up, and um, he's gone. Oh. Okay. Gone. And how often is this happening? Two, three times a week. Oh, wow. oh so this is a regular thing. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Amphi. Yes, ma'am. Where are you slipping off to? <laughs> uh, moreover, who are you slipping off to? Just at a friend's house. Just at, just at a buddy of mine's house. Is it a friend like this, or just a buddy? What? Well, it's actually a buddy, it's a friend, but my reasons behind that is because when I'm at home, I feel unwanted, okay? I feel unappreciative. Um, I get pushed away. Um, by that being said, for example, Mother's Day, okay? Okay. Now, I believe in taking care of my girl. I do what I gotta do to make her happy, whatever the case that may be, whatever. Okay. Okay, so I go out and buy nice things, I come cook breakfast, and not only that, I'll, I help clean from like that morning to like nine o'clock that night. Once the night ended, like, I didn't get a thank you, I didn't get a hug, I didn't get a kiss, I didn't even get myself. So, Sorry, excuse my language, but it's facts. How did, how did that feel? I mean, it, it hurts. Like, to be honest with you, it hurts. And this is not the first time. It happened on Valentine's Day as well, last year. I don't even know, Cutler, how that would be, because I can't imagine you doing stuff for somebody and, and going out of your way to make them happy, and they don't even acknowledge it. I think you know I appreciate what you do. I do. I know you appreciate what I do. I do. And we try to, we try to share that. I do. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. The bottom line is, he doesn't feel appreciated, and that's where the problem's coming in. Well, let me ask this, Ms. Parker. Uh, have, you, have you seen anything or found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Oh, yeah. Let me, let me give you a good example. All right. So, he says, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go see a friend of mine, visit with a friend. I'll be back in a few. Okay, be back in a few. So a couple hours later, um, he calls me. This is probably around 11.30 at night. Mm -hmm. By the time he finally calls me, hey, I've gotten a flat tire and uh, I'm gonna be a little bit late. This is why I'm running behind. Okay. Okay, that's right, fine. I just had surgery the week before 
and I'm not thinking nothing of it. You know, he's, he's done great for me, washes my hair, you know, when I had the surgery and all this, all this stuff. All right, well, points to you, Mr. Amphi. Points to you. All right, Mr. Amphi, I see you. So, anyway, so this night he says he's got a flat tire. Well, it's not the first time that he's had an excuse why he's late coming home. Okay. So I'm, okay, that's fine, you got a flat tire. Okay, how long are you gonna be? Uh, we're gonna work on it now. It's gonna be, a, you know, I'll call you when I'm on my way. Okay. A couple hours go by. And then, um... So, you, are you calling him during this time or are you waiting no, for him to call you back? No, because it's late at night, you know. Okay, so, and um, you knew where he was? He act... I thought I knew where he was at. Okay. So, it's about 2.30 in the morning. He calls me. Hey, you know what? We are having a problem with this. We can't seem to get the tire off or can't get the donut on or something. There was an issue. You're gonna have to come get me. I said, okay, baby, well, where are you? Well, when, you know, when you go down this interstate, when you get to this exit, I want you to call me. Well, hold on, me. hold on, just a second. Where, what, what was going on with this tire? Did you call somebody to try to help you, like AAA I did or something? Because, because I didn't have the proper tools. Okay. I, mean, I know how to work on cars, I know how to change stuff, but I just didn't have the proper tools. Don't so were you sitting on the side of the road? No, ma'am, no. Where were you? I was with my friend at another friend's house. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Okay, you were with a male friend? Yes. At another friend's house? Right. All right. So he calls you and says, so, hey, I need you to come get me. Yes. He, now, my understanding was he was at this friend's dad's house or, or first, something like that. First. So first. he tells me, okay, when you get to this exit, I want you to call me. So when I get to that point, <clears throat> and he was giving me vague directions. So you get off an exit, whatever, where do you end up? An apartment complex. Okay. And I'm looking around going, damn, this apartment complex looks familiar. We, had, we helped a female friend move into this apartment complex. So, okay, well, what a coincidence. Okay. So where is he when you see him? I know where this particular person lives because we helped her move in. So I'm sitting there waiting, and I'm calling, and I'm calling. And he finally answers the phone. Okay, I'll be out in just a second. So you so park, I and you park sit there. and I watch her door. And what happens? Guess who comes out? He comes out of the apartment. What does he do? Comes down to me like everything's cool. And when he gets to the car, what do you do? <laughs> I'm surprised the police weren't called. You start and yelling was, and going I off at him. loud and proud. <laughs> Okay, so he comes out. Did you ever see the friend that was supposed to be with him? No. Okay, what were you doing at this woman's house? I was with the friend, for one. I didn't I, ask I, you I that. Was. What I asked you was... Yes, ma'am. Why were you at this woman's house? I was just simply over there hanging out. That's it. Okay, why didn't you tell your girlfriend that's where you are gonna be? I'm because, at so-and-so's house. Because I knew it would, be, it would be an issue, but it wasn't what she was thinking it was. Okay, so but here's regardless, the, regardless of how on, it looked. On. If you don't tell your own story, they're gonna make it up. And that's what she did. And okay. what she's made up is you were sleeping with her. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. And you make it worse because you wouldn't even tell her, okay, I'm in so-and-so's apartment. Come pick me up. Now, she could have been, still could have been mad, but at least you were honest. You put layer upon layer Absolutely. upon layer deception in. Absolutely. Have you found anything else or any other reason to believe that Mr. Amphie's cheating? Yes, ma'am. So Tell me about that. our um, phone service, you can, um, particular carrier, you can put an app on the phones that shows, basically it's for children. <laughs> so well, I learn. Where do you that... track him to? <laughs> where do I track him to? Quite a few places. All right. So he says that I'm going down the street. I'm just going to a buddy's house. Well, this buddy lives seven miles from my house, 10 minutes max. Okay. Not 45 minutes away. That is not down the street. Down the street, visiting a buddy does not stay out until 6 a.m. in the morning. All right, so, so where, he, where he told you he was going was seven minutes away. GPS says something different. GPS, and that's what you brought with you today? Yes. Okay, Rod, will you get that for us? So, um, yeah, so the, the, the first one is the beginning of the day, and the second one is 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> the first one I have is from earlier in the day. He's in Mableton. He's at work. Mm -hmm. He's there from 1244. You track him. You're checking him out. And it goes to, it looks like 446 p.m. Mm -hmm. He's in Mableton working. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he does construction work, if I remember yes. from the court mm -hmm. paper. And Ms. Anthony, okay. is that where you were? 
Yes, sir. You weren't able to do construction work, doing your job. Yes, sir. Just like you said you were. Yes, sir. You came home after work that day. No, ma'am. You did not come home. No. Uh, okay, where'd you go? I went to my friend's house. Okay, so you're at your friend's house, seven miles away, correct? Yes, from yes, ma'am. where you live. No, from my job, which was out there, so I didn't have to drive nothing but a couple minutes. Okay, so you were at your friend's house that is in or near Mableton. Yes, ma'am. All right. Correct. I don't know what time, but he comes home after work, takes a shower and all that. And I know this because when I do finally come home from work, I see his dirty clothes. And he okay. had called me about 1.30 and said, hey, my buddy's picking me up. I'm going to go hang out with him. All right. Which, this buddy lives down the street. Okay. So, I'm okay, okay. So Is this 1.30 in the afternoon or 1.30 in the morning? In the morning. In the morning. Okay, so 1.30 in the morning. He's supposed to be seven miles from your house. You track him and where is he? Back in Mableton. The hey. What job do you do at 2.30 in the morning? In construction. In construction. Well, now, I, I, not to, you know, I'm playing an advocate, but, like, <laughs> when I see construction work on highways, for example, I see them, they'll shut down the highway and they'll be working at 2 in the morning because traffic is less. Mm -hmm. Could he have been working on a construction site for the no, highway? This is, a, this is a subdivision. So they, not so much. You, so yeah, the, you. Okay. Uh, I don't know I anybody tried, who's I tried. So banging on a hammer at 2.30 in the morning. Well, he might have been stays. banging it, but it wasn't a hammer. <laughs> All right. And the GPS will tell you within a few yards of where the location is, and it had been the same address all weekend. Oh, my goodness. All right, m m Mr. Amphi. Yes, sir. Okay. What kind of hammering were you doing at 2.30 in the morning in yeah, Mapleton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you looking at me like I didn't ask you a question? Well, like I said, <sighs> I was hanging out. That was all I was doing. I was hanging out with a friend. Who were you hanging out with? A female friend of mine. Is this the same female friend who's the, the, uh, the apartment that you had a flat tire at? No, sir, it's not. So this is a different female friend. Yes, sir, it is. So you've already not told Ms. Parker about the one female friend, and now this is a different female friend that you're hanging out that you didn't tell Ms. Parker about. Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. Well, and if you look at the dates, that's only like within a week. Oh, my goodness. I really want to get to the bottom of this. Ms. Parker absolutely believes that Mr. Amphi is cheating and that's why they're here in our courtroom. What does he mean to you? He means a lot. Tell me something. I've known him for a long time and I've been out of a bad relationship and we talked about it before he came here, back and moved in with me, that I needed somebody that was gonna be my rock, that was gonna meet me 110%. If I give my 110%, you need to be giving that too. Mr. And Amphi, I'm not getting that at all. I do, uh, uh, I'm looking at you and when you hear how she feels, what's going through your mind right now? What's going through my mind right now? Man, to be honest, it's all bull <laughs> Sorry. I care. I do care, but it's like, man, come on. Now. Well, we care, games. too. And we have done a full and complete investigation to make That's sure certain. we can find out what exactly is going on with all of these swirling accusations against you. Absolutely. And so at this time, the court is going to call private investigator Eric Eccles and licensed polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Ron, would you escort them in? Mr. Eccles, how are you? I'm doing fine in yourself. And Mr. Platt, how are you, sir? Good. How are you, Your Honor? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Mr. Eccles, would you tell us what you and your team did to investigate this case? Well, Your Honors, my team and I followed Mr. Amphrey over a course of a few days and various times and locations to see if he was doing anything suspicious. All right. Is that his car in the circle? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, we noticed Mr. Amphrey going through different places within his neighborhood, and at one instance, he went to this convenience store. Mr. Amphrey, when he said <laughs> that he had followed you for a number of days, you should have seen the look on your face, because I saw yeah, it. I'm mind blown right now. I know you <laughs> are. Blown. You're mind yeah. blown. <laughs> the question is, is our mind about to be blown by what we're getting ready to find out? Well, one of the days I surveilled Mr. Amphi um, at a location which in a residential neighborhood, and that house happened to be about 46 miles from his location. Um, once I was able to get into position, I identified Mr. Amphi here working at a job location doing some construction work. Okay, what did you conclude from your surveillance? Over several days I that I did the surveillance of Mr. Amphi, 
I could not find any suspicious behavior that would prove infidelity. All right. <laughs> Looks like you're doing good. You're working. You're doing what you're supposed to do. It was just shocking to find out somebody was watching. Right, that part. Yes, ma'am. Okay. (laughs) Couples court don't play. That's what we do. I see that. I see that. Ms. Parker, how do you feel at this point? I'm on the fence. She's on the fence. She's on the fence. She was over here, and now she's on the fence. We just got to see if she'll get over here or not. And for that, we have to turn to Mr. Tommy Platt. There we go. So, Mr. Platt, a polygraph examination was completed on Mr. Ampey. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You asked Mr. Ampey, since your relationship began, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than Ms. Parker? What was his response to that question? He stated yes, that he had admitted to cheating with three other women. All right, so I think on... On the fence is now back. I mean, I'm admitting to it, yeah, but there's reasons behind it. I have reasons. I don't feel wanted, for one. Okay, wait okay? a minute. On wait top a of minute. that... Wait a yes, minute. Ma'am. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. I know you're not being indignant about cheating and you're supposed to be in a relationship with this woman. I don't care what your reasons are. If you don't want to be with somebody, you tell them and then you do what you want to do. You You knew I needed you. You know what I've been through. I should have had the GPS on you when you first moved here. Should have. Miss Parker. Should have had one on you too, just as well, likewise. My suggestion is Miss Parker needs to move on. I I don't think this is... I think this is one you keep investing in. You all have been married for seven years. And, Mr. Turner, you have petitioned this court to do a full investigation because you believe your wife is cheating. Uh, Tell me why. She's a liar. She's sneaky. She hides her phone. Matter of fact, she cuts her phone off and hides it under the bed. Your Honor, that's not true. She's a liar. Wow, oh, that's, okay, that's, that's strong to come out and just say your wife is a liar. Miss Turner, what are you here for? Your Honor, I'm here to prove that I'm innocent, number one. Number two, that I am not a cheater. And I've been loving this man for seven years. It was more so like love at first sight when we did meet. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not going to stand for that. She's a liar. He, he she made plans with other guys. Me, and it's, it's just not true. Like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I goes into her phone... And no. his messages on Facebook with dudes saying a oh, bunch of stuff, meeting up everywhere. There's so, messages. what do these messages say? There are messages from childhood friends, on friendship type of thing, people that I've grown up She's with. A liar. Okay. Yeah, so... Now, I had to argue with nine different guys. So, you've had I'm arguments with, you say, nine different men? Nine different men. What kind of arguments are these you're having? Uh, hey, uh, I'm calling them like, hey, uh, why am I, why you texting my wife? They telling me like, hey, your wife texting me. She looking for me. I cannot control what other people say or what other people do. All I know, I have my truth. They're just friends. Okay, She's so lying. Mr. Turner, she can't have She's friends? Lying. Wait, you wait, don't wait, wait. That. I don't believe that at all. Like, she texting them saying, okay, you can call me whenever. They texting back saying, uh, yeah, we could go out here, there. Here's the thing, Mr. Turner. Are you saying your wife can't have male friends? Thank you. I'm, a- I'm just asking you. These male friends, they want her. They thirsty, you feel me? I know the difference between a good male friend and a horny male friend. Okay. You feel so you me? know the difference. I know. All right, I do you know, know the difference? I know the difference. Yeah. All right. Do I have any horny male friends? You better not. No, have you, you better... seen that? No, I have not. And I better not see it. All right. Look. But so I, I trust know, you. I trust you. You, you know but... men know the difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What does it Ron, look like? You know the yes, difference. Yes, sir. We know the difference. Okay, men what does know that the look difference. like? We hear a lot about <laughs> women's intuition, but, you know, men have a little common sense, too, right? Yes. And so okay. you know what, what it looks like. Yes. I know the difference. All right, here's my question. Specifically... What do you have that proves that your wife is cheating? Oh, she be lying about the spots where she be at. Like, okay. I GP... Can I take me to the screen, please? All right, you, you have an exhibit? Yes. Okay, All right, come step on. to the screen, please. <laughs> so, one day I'm asleep, she leaves out the house. I calls her, like, okay, babe, where you at? She said, oh, I'm going to the, uh, hair salon or whatever. So I said, okay, bet. I hangs up. Something was like, grab your phone. So I grabs my phone, take it out of my pocket, GPS tracked her. Oh, she said she was, she weird? Okay. On, on my phone, the GPS came up, 
And she was at apartment complexes right here. Apartment complex. So, so you're I, saying she's lying about her she's whereabouts. She's lying about her whereabouts. And you and, thought it was something, thinking something going I on. Was, I thought she was in there getting but, her nails and feet done. You getting pampered. All right. So you she thought was it was somewhere at this apartment complex getting pampered. Oh. oh. So you oh. think she's at the apartment complex with another man? Yes. Getting right. her full pamper on. Yes. No. No. All, right, All right, so, Ms. Turner, what pampering was going on at the apartment complex? Have you ever went to the nail salon and there's 10 ladies waiting to get their feet done, their nails done? I'm like, I don't have time for that sometimes. So why I have you two, speak up when I I have two small children Hold on, at Mr. home. And if the nail salon is packed, I'm going to go to the hair store, I'm going to go to the grocery, I'm going to go do something else that needs to be done. Okay. He doesn't but trust well, call me. me. Okay, but okay. wait a minute, Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. Oh. Hold on, Mr. Turner. Uh, you want to step back over to... Ms. Turner, the problem is you weren't at a grocery store, you were at an apartment complex. I can Who's... explain it. I can explain it. All right. Well, we want Sometimes you to. Sometimes he... he it, no, 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 no. You he tell me why me. you were at a... He Don't tell me about him. Me. Don't tell me about him. Tell me why okay. you were at that apartment complex. I'm going complex. to explain to you now. Okay. And he kept calling and calling, and a lot of things just built up, and it frustrated me, and I just went to my sister's house. All right, so you're basically saying you wanted a stress-free day. Yes, sometimes and you, I and, do. And, and going to go, the nail salon is supposed to be stress-free, but if it's packed and then he's constantly calling me, I just go to someone that I can talk to. She lives in an apartment complex. Okay, Color, you understand about somebody being wanting to be pampered. Yeah, yeah, I get that, and that's what we're trying to figure out what was going on at the apartment complex. Was she getting pampered at the apartment complex? And you say you weren't, I that weren't, you weren't cheating. No, that was you were at your I sister's house. I just needed house. someone to talk to, to relax. I was, I'm, I'm just frustrated with him constantly calling me, constantly harassing me, constantly accusing me. He doesn't you believe know why? anything that I say. You know why? It, it, it was an incident that happened a couple years ago. Oh. Me and her fought and argue. I left for like a week. I comes back, go check my house. I check the house phone. It's a number on there, a, a Miami number. So I'm like, well, who's this guy from Miami? I How'd you know it was a guy? I recognize that number on Facebook and the name. Wow. So I'm like, okay, bad. Let me go call. Hey, what's up? Uh, I, I, I'm asking a guy on the phone, I'm like, how you get my number? He said, no, it's your wife texting me. Me and her talked about coming That's to Miami. He was going to buy her a condo, a puppy. <laughs> like, just stupid. Like, how do you... And then oh. he's telling me about my business. I changed the Facebook status from being married to complicated. But it was okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I got some questions. Let me ask some questions, okay? You have a fight. Me and Mr. Cutler have had fights. Yes. I've not changed my status because a fight doesn't mean we're complicated. We still married. That's what married folk do. Okay. All right? Okay. <laughs> you don't call up the ex and say, we having problems because that's an invitation. That's that is invitation. an absolute invitation for him to say, well, let, yeah. me, let well, me help you with that, honey. The ex is on the other line saying, oh, really? Yes. And plus, so, the type of mind yeah. frame that bull had, he on the note like, well, if your wife going to throw a fastball, I'm going to hit it. That's exactly you it. You feel me? And whether yeah. you realize you threw that pitch... Right. You threw it. And he hit it. And that's why he's up here complaining about it. You don't let anybody in your marriage but you. Right. Especially not an ex. Oh, my goodness, no. What other evidence do you have that your wife is cheating? We have a delivery guy that drops stuff off. He'll ring the bell. I picks up. Hey, it's... You know, the guy, the delivery guy. I go through the door, it's him, but he had that look on his face like, why is you at this door? Where is she at? Like, he'll get back in his truck, beep his horn, I go through the thing, he'll stick his middle finger at me, drives off, like, who is this guy? See, sometimes I'm always at work. So when he comes, okay. she goes to Look, the door. Look, he's just giving your wife the package. He better not be giving my wife the package. <laughs> okay, Cutler. Why are you better saying not like be that? No Why packages? you saying like that? <laughs> Look, I'm just saying... <laughs> Why are you say it like that? Yeah. You're trying He's to... a liberal uh, man. You, you He's instigating. There. I'm not instigating. Yeah, you Houston. are. Look, I'm just saying, delivery I... man... Is delivering. He's, he's delivering. He's there to give his wife the package. Uh -huh. See? That's what, no, she, that's what he's there no, to do. Mm -hmm. How close are you and this delivery guy? Okay. I have many delivery men that come to my home. Hey, oh, really? more, oh, more than one? 
They're delivering household items. They're delivering pull-ups for my son, who is disabled. I make it deliveries weekly. I make it deliveries bi-weekly, monthly, all the time. So, you are trying to take care of the home. Yes. So, listen to this. What is your household like with him being, well, frankly, that suspicious? It's frustrating. And then it's affecting everything. Tell when me I about mean, how it's affecting, it's affecting everything, it's affecting our love life. It's affecting our social life. It's affecting our communication to the point where he drove me downtown to get a divorce one day when I didn't even know we was going to go get a divorce. Yeah, I'll we go to hop in, let's go. Downtown and he's didn't like... Didn't tell her. He's like, I'm divorcing you today. And I'm downtown and I'm shaking. Like, what is he doing? So, the lady gives me the paper and the whole time I'm looking at the divorce papers and they're like, do you want us to help you fill out the paperwork? And then I'm like, yes. And then he knocks the papers out my hand and I'm like, isn't this what you want? And he's like, but I didn't know you were going to go through with it. Okay, oh. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. All right. Not only so, that, Mr. Turner, did you, you see a ring on his finger? Because you know why? I took it off three years ago. Three you, years ago. You have yeah. not worn your wedding band in, in three years? years? Do you think I feel that in he takes years. his ring off? Because I feel as though if, if she gonna disrespect me with these dudes, I'm taking this off. So, so all of this, the wedding band, driving her down to get a divorce, all of this you're doing because you believe that she's cheating. Yes. He's even questioning certain things with the kids. Because you tells me that these other guys no, is the, the no. father. I told him we had a, a one-year-old birthday party for our baby. So he, he did tell me, don't give the baby, which is our son, don't give him any ice cream, but it slipped my mind because I was taking care of the other 30 kids in the neighborhood as well. I did give him the ice cream and walked away. He started to choke. Once the baby started to choke, he comes to me in front of family, friends, and he was like, um, I'll take him from you. And, and I'm storming up the steps, and I was like, if he's yours. <laughs> and you always throw stuff like that in my his face. His friends' <laughs> jaws actually dropped like... And I was like, oh, my God, what did I just do? And I just kept running. I just kept running, and I went upstairs, and I just shut the door. So that one comment... Yes. ...opened the door... Destroyed a lot of... a lot of to things. To you believing she's not been faithful to you. So that one line has caused all of this. No, yes. it's it been more than one line, because she constantly says it now. Like, a, a, after that first time she said it, oh, it was downhill from there. You said Every it more than once? Every time we get into an argument, it's you're not your baby, it's not your baby... And so you've done all this just to be mean, to get back at him. A lot of it is because I'm angry. I'm angry... But angry at who, though? I'm angry at you on no, how you I make me feel. I left my whole feel. family in Philadelphia just to come and be with you. You didn't leave nobody in Ohio. I, left I understand that. So me. if you know that you invested, I invested just as much time in yeah, the marriage as you did. We both did. We both did. We both I did. I vowed not to have any more children. I gave him two children when I didn't even want any more children because he didn't have any children. Why would I have two children that I never planned on having for someone that I didn't love or for someone I'm just going to go off and cheat? The same way everybody else have kids and put them never and, and they be baby okay. dads the next day. I would All right. never in do different that. homes. You know, from what I'm seeing up here, these cheating allegations are ripping your marriage apart. Yes. You're chasing down guys on Facebook. You're not wearing your wedding band. Mm -hmm. You know, you're driving your wife to the courthouse talking about let's get a divorce. This is madness. All of this because you think she's cheating. Oh, things are gonna change if I find out the truth. They're gonna... When I find out... If you find out she's cheating, then what? I'm not going to Ohio. I'm staying on that plane and going to Philly. Okay. If you find out she's cheating, you're done. I'm done. I'm done. You're out. A seven-year marriage. I still don't trust her. All right. Well, the good news is the court ordered a polygraph examination of Ms. Turner, and we have those results. We've enlisted the services of a certified polygraph examiner, Mr. Patrick Coffey. Ron, please escort Mr. Coffey into the courtroom. Yes, sir. Ms. Coffey, how are you? I'm good, sir. And you? All right. Thank you for being here. You performed a polygraph examination on Ms. Turner, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Right. Mr. Coffey, you asked Ms. Turner, were you with another man when you told your husband you were at the nail shop? What was her response to that question? Uh, she responded with a no. 
What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined that she was being truthful. Now, that's what we like to see. But, Mr. Turner, you had some strong words when you came in here. Yeah, you straight up called your wife a liar. That's just one. There's, there's a couple more. Since you got married in November of 2010, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man? What was her response? Again, she responded, no. What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined that she was being truthful. <laughs> I think you need to say something to your bride right now. In fact, I'm ordering you to say something to your bride right now. Come here, baby. <laughs> Daddy loves you, okay? When we get back, the ring definitely going on. Definitely going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what this court is about. Getting to the truth, rebuilding trust, and helping you all to move forward together. You all have been in a relationship for two years. You're living together. You recently appeared in Lauren Lake's paternity court where you determined the paternity of your child. Mr. Osborne, Tell us why you're here today. I'm here today to get unanswered questions that I have about her cheating on me and about the text messages I received from her so-called best friend. Mm. All right, do you see the look on her face? I do. What, what is going through your head? I was disgusted with that statement. Mm. Why? why are you disgusted? It's all lies, it's hearsay, it's... Uh, there's no evidence of me of any sort. I mean, I've explained myself. It has not stopped since paternity court. Well, so, what's it like living in your home with this big, giant cloud of accusations? He gives me a headache. That's what... That's exactly how I feel. It's a big headache. So, you have a headache and you got a heartache. Yes, Your Honor. What is it that is going on that makes you think that she's cheating? Uh, one day I was at work. Okay. And I received a text message stating that she might be pregnant. And that don't fall for it because it might not be mine. Which, so this what? is affirming that it was, so I was telling the truth then and I'm telling the truth now. But, okay, but the deal is that her friend texted you at work and told you that she might be pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. And indicated that that child might not be yours. Yes, Your Honor. Wow. After she sent them the first message saying that she's pregnant and it might not be mine, it followed up with a bunch of screenshots of conversations between them where she's talking about sneaking out, going to see other guys, and being with not one, not two, but three different guys. Three. What? Her best friend tells you that she's cheating with not one, not two, but three different guys. The day yes, after Your Honor. a big fight. All right, Very you're holding fightful. those text messages? Yes, Your Honor. Ron, would you please get those? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you're saying, you're saying that those text messages were the result of you having had a big fight with her. I mean, I wrote the messages. I'm not denying oh. that. But the, the reason that she even sent them in the, in the first place was out of spite. OK, well, let's right, take let's a look, look at, at these messages. So, this message is from your former best friend to you. Yes, right, Mr. Osborne? Yes. And it says, she's been blanking guy one since you went away. Also, she's been blanking guy two out in blank and guy three. But they are new people. Wow. So, this is her telling you, Here, here's what I'm getting ready to send you about these three guys, right? Yes. Okay. This next text message is a screenshot of a conversation between your girlfriend and her friend. Yes, Your Honor. And your girlfriend says, I'm about to wait till he falls asleep and go to guy one. I wish guy three didn't live in so that blank would be on speed dial. And that was at 1.24 in the morning. 
And then at 8.38... The friend writes... Did you go? And Ms. Damon responded, yes, girl, I've been up all night. He's still sleeping. Oh. You, you I wrote, wrote these. those because they put me in a position to pick between them. I couldn't be friends with her and be in a relationship with him. Why would you want to be so, in so, friends with the so. person that wants you to be a cheater? What? No, Why would she you want to be you with a so friend that makes you look me. like a She did not oh. want me to be unhappy with you. Okay. Ms. Damon. We'll find out. This has nothing to do with your friend. This has yes, everything does. to do with you talking about going no, to see God to one and wishing putting... God three no, didn't no, live no. somewhere else. I could not. No, no, no. I yes, could not yes, be yes. in a relationship with him and be friends with her. At I... the time, I felt like she was important enough to me. I didn't want to throw my friendship away with her. And he was important enough to me. I didn't want to lose my relationship with him. But, but here's the thing. Am I missing something? So you the, are. Uh, because the, the text end of it... just didn't end here. Your friend writes... Where'd you go? And you said you went to guy number one. I don't understand how going through these messages has anything. I said I wrote oh, them we're about and to why talk I about wrote it. them already. We're about to talk about it. Now, Miss Damon, here's my question. You say this ex-girlfriend, she sent this out of spite. Yeah. That doesn't change what you wrote. It doesn't change I've the I've explained why I wrote it. But why you wrote it makes no sense. How exactly. does it not? How does because it not? Because who? I told her what she wanted to hear. That's the type. I, I didn't tell her. You know what? She wanted to know you were sleeping around with yeah, three other said, guys. Yeah, actually, and yeah. And that's, some, that's the type of friend you want to be around. There it at is. At the there time. It. At the time. There it is. Oh. I know how it looks, but like I said, the lie detector test will show that I'm, I'm telling the truth now, just like I was with the paternity. Well, there's her side, there's your side, and there's the best friend side. Miss Nicole is here. Rod, would you escort her in? Yes, y'all. I'm done. No, I'm done. No, no. Good day. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, please state your name for the court record. Nicole Taylor. We have just looked at some text messages. Uh, between you and Ms. Damon. Uh, my question to you is, why would you send these messages to Mr. Osborne? Well, because me and Jillian got into it, and she tried to mess up my relationship. Okay, so... there's the spite that I was talking so, about. Okay, right. are we... Out of are spite, we I will admit, now? out of oh. spite, I told Elliot, but that does not mean that what she said isn't true. No, but I explained why I said that to, to you. Yeah, but you cheating has nothing to do with our friendship. Whether I yeah. wanted you to be with him yeah. or guy two How you, or guy yeah. one or Did guy three. Ever... No. So, no. go ahead. How sure are you that she cheated? I was with her with guy two. You were with her when that happened? Yes. Wow. What happened? Well, we went over to his trailer <clears throat> and... <laughs> and wow. they went off in the back, disappeared. She came out. He didn't. And when we were leaving, after we got into the car, she volunteered the information that she was sleeping with him and that she was gonna be going back over there. How long were they back there in the back? Uh, a little too long. Ms. Damon, what were you doing in the back of the other guy's home? I never went into a trailer. I'm not saying nothing to the lie detector test because nothing I say matters at all. Like, I mean, no. So, I mean, I'll just wait. The test, the test speaks for me. The test speaks for me. Okay, Ms. The Damon. Test speaks for everything me. Else. Let's, let's, a couple no. things, Ms. Damon. One, you speak for you. No, the test will... Nobody's listening to what I got to say. I uh, said I understand how all this makes me look. I understand that. Okay? I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to wait. But, Ms. Really? Ms. Damon, I'm waiting look, for the test. Ms. Damon, listen. Let me... Hold on. You don't get to decide what you tell, what questions you answer or no answer in this courtroom. So I don't want to hear from you. The lie detector's gonna speak for me. Well, if I'm asking you a question, I expect you to answer it. And so does Judge Cutler, okay? You never rode in a vehicle with Ms. Taylor to another man's house. No. No. I never did. Well, explain your friend, other friend, coming to me, telling me the same thing. When... Elliot, I have never, since my daughter's well, I've, been born, I've, I've never went friends. anywhere without her. So tell me... I have me had two friends. I did this all with friends. my child Osborne. present. Yes, so you Ronnie. stayed at home with my child? Did you stay at home with my child? Miss Osborne, you are testifying. One of her friends came to you and told you the same thing Miss Taylor is telling you? Yes, Ron. Since Paisley's what? been and... born? 
Miss yes. Damon. You're full... Oh. Can you tell me the circumstances, <clears throat> how that came about? We had her, one of her friends coming to my house to pick up some stuff. And after I loaded it into her van, she started telling me about how she had sexual relationships with other guys at her house. Huh. At the friend's house? At the friend's house, Your Honor. I don't... I think that's completely false. And since Paisley has been born, I've never once left her unless I went to work. So try that story again. Do you okay. go and hang no, out with never your once. All so, the time. so, so I take my nine-month-old and then I leave her while I go have sex with someone. Is that what I do? I ran to people's houses. If they're willing okay, to then. let so you have people come completely... over, they're willing to watch Ms. your Damon. kid. I guess you are so full of it. So, Miss okay. Damon, is your testimony that all of these allegations of guy one, two, three are all lies? All yeah. false. Yes, Dick. yes, all lies. And this is a, just a giant conspiracy. Yeah, and once you read the results, you've you got to let that. me finish my question. That, I, that I is know a, what it all how you answer a question I haven't even asked yet. It's all leading to the same thing. That is, this is all a giant conspiracy. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. People are just making this stuff up about you to get back at you and him. I don't know about him. I don't know nothing about that man, but I'm, me, yes. <laughs> I don't know what he has going on. I know he's full of it, though. How have you managed to surround yourself with all these people who have so much hate for you? I don't know. I have a... <laughs> make poor decisions. That's what it is. All right, Mr. Keller, I think we got enough. We have her ex-best friend, Miss Taylor, who has come here in person to say, yes, I have been in the same home where she was having sex with guy number two. Then you have a second friend completely different person who says the same thing. I'm aware of her having sex with other men. She's had sex with other men at my home. Hmm. And, and then we have hmm. the text messages that she sent back and forth saying, I want guy number one, I want guy number two. All of this has led Mr. Osborne to absolutely believe that Ms. Damon is cheating. Ms. Damon, on the other hand, says, I absolutely believe these tests are going to exonerate me and I believe in the truth and veracity of them. And that is what she is depending on. Well, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf and certified polygraph examiner Michael Williams to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. How are you all? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Osborne, I think I saw in your court papers you had some concerns about Ms. Damon continuously denying these accusations. And even if we had an expert, she would still try to deny them. Yes, Your Honor. Okay? So, what we did to make sure that there were no questions, we have not one but two experts who have examined Ms. Damon. Now, Mr. Wolf. You are a forensic voice analyst, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And what does forensic voice analysis entail? What it does is it measures the frequencies in a person's voice, and when one of the frequencies goes away, it's indicating that there's deception in the person's answer. And, Mr. Williams, of course, you conducted a lie detector test. Yes, sir. And we're familiar with what a lie detector test does and what it... It shows whether a person's being deceptive or not, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Now, you each individually ask Ms. Damon the exact same questions, and you have your individual results. So, the first question. You both asked Ms. Damon, since your relationship with Mr. Osborne began, have you had sexual intercourse with guy number two? And, and I, just as a reminder, guy number two was the guy that Ms. Taylor testified she had sex with at his home, and she was there, just for clarity. Mr. Wolf, what was her response to you? She said no, Your Honor. And Mr. Williams? Your Honor, she said no. What did the voice analysis determine? The analysis determined she was being deceptive, Your Honor. Mr. Williams, what was the result of the polygraph? The polygraph determined she was being deceptive. <laughs> Ms. Damon was asked, since your relationship with Mr. Osborne began, have you had sexual intercourse with any man other than Mr. Osborne in your friend's home? Mr. Wolf, what was her response? She said no, Your Honor. 
Mr. Williams, what was her response? She said no. Mr. Wolf, what did the forensic voice analysis determine? The analysis determined that she was being deceptive, Your Honor. OK. Mr. Williams, what did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined she was being deceptive. Wow. Two tests, the same result. Yeah, I don't, I think that's, that's phony. I do, I don't care, and I'm ready to walk out, so I'm done. You've already testified that you are relying on these to exonerate you. Yes. But they don't. Well, I'm surprised. Mr. Osborne. Yes. You don't yes. look surprised, yes. sadly. I see the tears in your eyes, though. They're fake tears. They're fake. Can you tell, tell the court and tell her, tell Ms. Don't Dana, tell me. what you are feeling in this particular moment to know all that you had been hearing from her friends was true? <sighs> Hurt and stupid. You are stupid. He is. Ms. Damon, I want you to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked you. Well, I'm saying... If you say another word, Ron, I'm gonna have you get her out of here. Yes, ma'am. I am so sorry that you have had to endure this. And whatever you are and whoever you are, you deserve better. Nobody deserves to be called that. Thank you, Your Honor. You two have been together for two years. You're currently engaged. And you have been looking forward to your fairy tale wedding, but that will only happen if you find out your Prince Charming is not a toad. Explain why you're here today. My fairy tale wedding is on the line. Um, me and Anthony have been together for two years. We recently got engaged. Uh, I've been planning this wedding my whole life. I have a scrapbook. I've been all my hopes and dreams are in here. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. that's really pretty. Thank you. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, I just, I really just want to know if he's cheating or not, because if he is, I will not marry him. I'm not going to marry a liar, and I'm not going to waste my time, so, yeah. You know, this wedding, it means a lot to you. I mean, you got your book that you've been planning this since you were, like, a little girl? Yes, yes, absolutely. And so you're really looking forward to this. Yeah, I mean, I love him, and I want to be with him forever, so it means Your a lot Honor, to me. Your Honor, I've never cheated. I've, I've always been faithful since day one. I, I love her. I always loved her. I, I want to be her Prince Charming, and I want to marry her for the rest of my life. Because, Mr. Johnson, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, you see the book she's got there. I mean, yeah. this has been <laughs> on her mind. I mean, this is something she's looked forward to. Yeah. And out of all the guys that she could have had, she's chosen you. Yes, Your Honor, and I'm ready for it. Are you sure you're ready for it? I'm confident. 100% I'm ready. Because she says you're cheating. I'm not cheating. I never cheated. That's a lie. I am interested in knowing how this fairy tale began. My family and his family lived next door to each other. So okay. I would go over to visit with my family and I would see him. He would always try to talk to me and I was always ignoring him and I didn't want anything to do with him. But eventually he caught my attention because he wouldn't leave me alone. I agreed to go on a date. I gave him my phone number. Um, he took me out. Actually, the first time we ever went out together, he took me on a hike to a beautiful waterfall. It was really romantic. We had a wow. picnic. Yeah, it was really, really nice. It was different, but I loved it. So for my birthday, he took me to a hotel. Um, when we got there, it was beautiful. The bath was drawn. There was roses everywhere, champagne, music Oh, look playing. at you. <laughs> all right, all right, Mr. Johnson. You did it up right. All right, so we got this lovely beginning. He is, you definitely rolling out the pr Prince Charming vibe. Yeah. So how did we get to here? What were the things that made you go, my fairy tale is wrapping up? What was the first thing that made you think that? So first thing first is our sex life. Um, when we first got together, of course, we were in our honeymoon stage. We were really in love. We were having sex three, two, three times a day. Um, now it's <laughs> moved on to like maybe I'm lucky if I can get it once or twice a week. Mm. So uh, that's a been a very big problem. Um, also, well, Your I... Honor, I got a second job, so working the graveyard shift, so that's why it slowed down because I mean I'm working overnight and I really don't have time no more because I'm tired and I'm trying to make money to give her a fairy tale wedding that she won't. <laughs> I get that, but, you know, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, you yeah, know... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you... I mean, yes, you gotta put in the time at work, but you also gotta attend to her. You just can't, yes, you know, sir. leave her out, Nicole. Thank All you. right, I'm gonna have to respectfully dis disagree, Mr. Cutler. What? Her expectation with him having a second job and the, and the 
graveyard shift. Yes, ma'am. He, she can't expect him to be putting it down three times a day because he, <laughs> I mean, he gotta have some energy to go to work. <laughs> so I can't... And I understand. I mean, I do understand. It's just, it just makes me feel bad sometimes. Like, I, I don't feel that. as confident about our relationship as I used to because of that reason, so... Well, I I'm just saying, there's the middle ground, because some people can hold down two jobs and still put it down when they need to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you feel like Mr. Cullen just patted himself on the back? Think, you, yeah. That's how I feel. His arm look double-jointed. Yeah. Did you just you know. pat yourself on the back? I'm not calling any names. I'm just saying that, uh -huh. it, that it's possible. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> you know, what other warning signs have you seen? So I found a text message in his phone. Um, I actually have it right here, if I can show you. Please, Ron, would you get that uh, evidence, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right, so you were going through his phone, I take it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. And you found this text exchange between Mr. Johnson and another woman. Yes. And she writes, hi, you little sexy. Oh. Smiley with the mm -hmm. eyes and the laughing tears. Like, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he responds, that's what's up. I don't want your boyfriend getting mad with you. No boyfriend. I'm single. Oh, what's up? Need another one of them hugs. <laughs> There was nothing like that. There was an old friend, and that was mm -hmm. at the beginning of our relationship when we first got together. When I when I got with her, I cut out everything off with her. I didn't talk to her no more, and I ain't talked to her since. Well, then help me clarify a couple of things. Uh -huh. When you say, I don't want your boyfriend to get mad with you, if y'all just friends, why would her boyfriend be getting mad? I mean, because I still don't want to talk to nobody who got a boyfriend, because I ain't trying to get in no drama myself. I'm mm -hmm. a calm person. And then when she says, I need another one of them hugs, that means there was at least one hug. Yeah. And she wants another one. Yeah, because I was walking down the street and I had seen her. And this was, <laughs> this, this was before me and Chloe had actually got together. And I gave her a hug. It was, it was nothing serious. But, so, Ms. Kemp, you don't believe that? No, I don't. Okay, so... Because if I just saw one of my friends walking down the street and I gave them a hug, I wouldn't text them and be like, oh, I need another hug. It wouldn't mean anything to me. That's... No, I don't believe it at all. Let me ask you okay. this. Was this an old text or was this a recent text? It wasn't recent since we had been engaged, but uh -huh. it has still had been when we were together. So right. that's Got all it. that matters. I don't care if it was last week or six months ago. It still happened. Have you ever seen him with another woman that made you go, what is this? Actually, I have. Okay. Um, so like I said before, me and Key Anthony's family live next door to each other. I actually have a picture. Can I show you? Absolutely. Sure. Step to the Step monitor. To the monitor. So this is where Key Anthony's family lives. That's where mine live. Um, we were over there visiting with our family. I was next door and he was, of course, across the street. Um, I saw a car pull up and they come to my family's house. I don't know who it is, it's a woman. She comes knocking on the door and she says, hey, is Key Anthony here? And I was like, who are you and why are you here? She was like, oh, I'm just an old friend. I saw his car in the driveway, so I thought I would stop by. Hmm. And I was like, okay, um, well, no, he's not here. And I slammed the door in her face. So she was like, you know, walked away, got back in her car. You slammed the <laughs> door in her face? Yeah, because I don't, I don't like that. I feel like that was very disrespectful. She knows that that's not his house. Why would you come there asking for him? You know I mean, what I mean? No, can I take a message? Can I tell him who stopped by? No, no she you, doesn't need to talk to him. It's you okay. slammed the door in her face. <laughs> yeah. Why would you go to my family's house when you know they've lived there for years? You know where he's at. You know what well, I mean? Was the car parked closer to your family member's it house? It was in just in the middle of the driveway. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so she had to know he had a relationship with you... Exactly. ...to know to even come over exactly. there. Exactly. And that's where the disrespect exactly. comes in. Exactly. I'm still not convinced, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, she's... There's it... more, there's more, there's All right. more. Oh, okay, there's more. Let's so... see what else you got. She gets back in the car, and I I go to that window right there, and I'm looking. Um, she's texting. Uh, my fiancé comes running out the house and gets in the car with her. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So I don't do anything. They pull off, and I'm FaceTiming. I'm calling. I'm texting. I mean, like, I think 22, 24 missed calls. No answer. No answer, no, no response, answer, no, no nothing. Didn't even acknowledge the fact that I was calling him. Like, didn't even text me back and be like, oh, I'll call you in a minute. Nothing. Just didn't acknowledge me. How long was he gone? Like, almost an hour. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he comes back. What happens? I, I, I know it's old. I didn't cheat. That was an old friend. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's oh, usually, that, usually that, what you cheat with is an old friend. <laughs> Thank it was you. nothing like that. So the car pulls back up in the driveway. Yes, the car pulls back up in the driveway, and she quickly pulls off, and he gets out and just all casual walks back to his family member's house. Mm -hmm. um, and I go up to him. I knock on the door, banging on the door. I'm yelling, who is she? Where did you go? What were you doing? Why were you ignoring me? Um, and he said, oh, we just went to the store. And at this point, you are hot. You've I'm been like, blowing the up his store, phone. Right, like, what did you go to the store for? There's no bags. You didn't buy anything new. He couldn't produce any evidence to show me that they went to the store. So, yeah. All right, Mr. Johnson. She... Thank you, Ms. Kemp. You can step back to the podium. Mr. Johnson, this ride to the store. Yes, sir. Is that the only ride you took? Yes, sir. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. It was. Miss Kim, how far is the closest store to to your to your family mm, member's house? There's a couple, but the closest one maybe seven, five to seven minutes. And he was gone how long? Almost an hour. Okay, Mr. Johnson, why were you gone an hour for a five to seven minute? Trip. First of all, she was an old old friends of, of the family. She's been in the family for years, and it was nothing serious like that. She came by and she said she was going to the store, and I needed to go to the store to get some for my family members' kids. So I was like, "Yeah, I ride with you." So did your friend stop by your family member's house for the sole and express purpose of seeing if you wanted to go to the store? No, it was not. That, that wasn't the purpose <laughs> of her stopping by there. She was just stopping by to see how I was doing, just checking up. But she had a phone. Yeah. So she could call you. I mean, yeah, but she could text you. Y'all don't. Sometimes people just go by people's houses and just check up on them, see how they're doing. No. No, they no, don't. No, I don't, don't do that. Do you do that? No, I don't, I don't do, do that. that. Now I will say this: the fact that this woman went to Miss Kemp's family member's house. Uh huh. I mean, it's not like she's trying to hide something. Exactly. No. So, no, I that's think she true. She was trying to let me know that she was there, if that makes sense. She was trying to let her presence be known. That's pretty bold. Right. It, I agree. And that's why she says disrespectful. Exactly. Now you get it. You track it. Go, go, cousin. Go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm still on the fence about that one. That could go either way. I, there was I no disrespect intended. She's just thinking it like that. She comes up with these crazy stories in her head. I'm not crazy. I, I wouldn't have any stories to create if you didn't give me reasons to think certain things. I mean, it's that's just honest. Yeah. Nothing's never going on. I'm all, I've been faithful and I always will be faithful. I think we've heard enough. Right. Okay. And the, the reasons that Ms. Kemp has are there's been a decrease in sex. Mm -hmm. He's got a text message about from another woman talking about she wants another hug. You got the girl who comes to the family member's house looking for him. They go to the store and they're gone for an hour. Right. And for those reasons, you believe that he's cheating. Absolutely. And if he's cheating, this fairy tale wedding that you've been it's looking over. so forward to. It's over. Is I will not, not marry happen. him. Nope. If if he is cheating on me, I he could the ring is off, I'm done, and I'm not marrying him. Mr. Johnson, you know, you're saying you're working two jobs, trying to give her the fairy tale wedding. How does this make you feel? I mean, it just, it makes me feel upset that she don't trust me. I mean, I've been faithful since day one. I ain't never gave her a reason that I ever cheated on her. Well, this court has done a complete and thorough investigation. At this time, the court would like to call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is he cheating? Well, I'm well, Your Honor. How about you? Good, good. It's good to see you as always. You as well. Mr. Uh, Wolf, would you just share briefly your credentials for the court? Yes, ma'am. I've been in law enforcement for more than 20 years, most of which was spent as a criminal investigator. I've been a forensic voice analyst for more than 12 years, and I've conducted hundreds and hundreds of exams. All right. Hold on, Ms. Kemp. I saw you just took a really huge breath. I'm nervous. I mean, this is, I, I don't want it to be true because then it means like everything's over. So. I'd, I would rather me be wrong than him be wrong because I do want to be with him and I do want to marry him. You have a reason to absolutely be nervous. So, no, you, I get it. Let's take a look at the first question you asked. Did you have sexual intercourse with the girl Miss Kemp saw you get in the car and leave with from your family member's house? 
No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Now, there's a little smile. Yeah, I mean... Okay. He's got his Cheshire on. I just saw it. It came up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we do have one more question. Let's take a look at the next question. Have you had physical sexual contact with any woman other than Ms. Kemp since your relationship began in April of 2017? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. So I guess fairy tales can come true. Yes, they can, Mr. Cup. <laughs> yes, they can. You just grinning. I'm happy. I, mean, I know you are. I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather me be wrong than him. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll probably he'll not he'll be mad for a while about it that I brought him. <laughs> <laughs> He's grinning too because he's happy. happy that this weight has been lifted off of his shoulders, right? Right. I'm happy she finally got the truth. <laughs> <laughs> 